What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to enable and use NVIDIA NIS. It's a brand new feature, different to the normal scaling that's usually there, somewhat more similar to DLSS or AMD's alternative for that, though now it's available to absolutely everyone with the latest NVIDIA drivers. On top of that, I also have a quick comparison just to show you what kind of difference this makes. What is NVIDIA NIS? Well, as everyone knows, if you lower your in-game settings, you get more FPS and a smoother experience most of the time. If you lower your resolution, it scales pretty linearly. The lower your resolution, the better your FPS will be. Features like a DLSS and AMD's equivalent will lower the resolution and then use AI and specific cores on the actual graphics cards to upscale your image to get it looking almost as good as the original image while lowering at a much lower resolution. NIS is very similar, but it doesn't require 30 series cards, etc, etc. You don't need to support DLSS to use NIS. This currently is NVIDIA exclusive, and it comes along with the latest graphics drivers. So to begin, the most simple thing you have to do first is update your graphics drivers. In the description down below, you'll find a link to this page here. You'll be able to punch in your correct graphics card and simply search for the update. Download the update, download once again, and wait for it to complete. Of course, if you have NVIDIA GeForce experience, you can download the update through there, etc, etc. When the download is complete, open it up and then click OK. Then it'll start extracting, then the actual installer itself will open up. Simply choose whether you'd like GeForce experience or not. I don't use it, so I'll click the second option, agree and continue. And I choose custom over here as I do remove some of the elements here. I don't use the NVIDIA HD audio driver. The rest of these I leave ticked. Next. And now all we have to do is wait for the installation to complete. My recording will cut out, so I'll jump to the end of this process. You can click close over here, right click your desktop and open the NVIDIA control panel. You'll then see a screen that looks like this. Make sure that you're on the adjust image settings with preview tab and then choose use the advanced 3D image settings. Click apply and either click take me there or click manage 3D settings up here. In this list under global settings, you'll find the image scaling option. All you have to do is simply turn this on. Next up, we have a sharpening slider over here that you can customize to add a sharpening effect when you're upscaling from lower resolutions. With this set to zero, your game will usually be quite blurry as you're simply scaling up a smaller image to something a bit bigger. The higher you crank this, the more sharpening effect you'll have. You'll find that the best results are somewhere between 10 and 30%. Anything higher than that looks too over sharpened and anything below looks too blurry. Though this is all up to experimentation and of course depends on what kind of games you're playing. I for one will be leaving this on around 30% and maybe coming back to turn this down later. The other thing you might want to do is tick overlay indicator. This way, when you're playing specific games, you'll see an icon in the very top left saying NIS if NVIDIA image scaling is currently running. So after running a benchmark, I'll simply turn this on, set the sharpening to around 30ish, enable the overlay indicator, OK, apply, and now things should be working properly. Mm, unfortunately, you're not able to see, but there's a green NIS icon up here in the top left as I'm currently scaling 2K to ultra wide 2K. So even in Windows, this is taking place. If we head across to the change resolution tab over here, select a monitor, you can see I'm currently using 2560 by 1440 on an ultra wide. So it's doing a bit of image scaling to get things looking a bit sharper. But if we go ahead and scroll up, you'll see scaling resolution. The only thing I understand that you lose when you do this is custom resolutions, though this may be supported sometime in the future. I can go ahead and choose any of the other resolutions here and my screen will simply render at a lower resolution and then scale up. Of course, this will be completely different for you depending on what kind of monitor you have. 3840 by 2160. As you can see, I can go down resolutions here and the percentage next to it is whatever percent this resolution is compared to the native resolution over here. On top of this, for some reason, it's gone from 165 hertz all the way down to a limit of 60. So this is something else to keep in mind. You are giving up a few features for better FPS in most cases. So already, some of you may already have lost interest in this, but of course, if this still has your interest, great, you can carry on watching. Anyways, all you're gonna have to do from here is choose a different resolution. And I find that anything below about 77%, you start to notice the blurriness. 
assembly, select this one over here and click apply. Now I'm already noticing some aliasing around text, but that should be fine in games. That's just the sharpening effect. On top of this, I don't think anything else here has changed. It seems about fine. The only thing that has changed for me is my display setup over here. It's for some reason placed my monitor above this one. I'll go ahead and fix this now, or at least try to. Whatever, that's fine. And now hop back into a game. If I head across to adjust desktop size and position, you can see I'm currently locked to aspect ratio, or at least these are disabled. I'm pretty sure I'm on full screen because this 1080p image is stretched to ultra wide and it's showing my actual refresh rate here and resolution. Odd. Windows reports to me that I'm currently using my custom resolution over here and you're able to change it in games. It doesn't have to only be inside of the Nvidia control panel and all of these odd numbers here have also been added by Nvidia. On the advanced display settings, you can see I'm locked to 60 Hertz. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into a game and see what kind of difference it made. Of course, I won't be able to show you, but in the top left, there is an NIS bit of text. Oh well. Now for some odd reason, the game has picked a super scaled down version. Even I'm seeing it with black bars on my ultra wide video. 3440 by 1440 frame rate 20. That is definitely not right. And it seems it's also disabled HDR. Anyways, saving, heading back into graphics. I'll go ahead and benchmark the game once again. Yeah, for some reason, it doesn't seem like it's stretching vertically to the full height of my monitor, but it is playing the game. I seem to have dropped a few FPS down from 40 to about 39, but it should be doing something positive. A little odd. This isn't the resolution that was promised to me, however. Quick side note from after the actual recording itself, it seems that it tried to fit my ultra wide game inside of a 16 by 9 screen and then stretched it out to be ultra wide once again. So I was seeing black bars and everything was crushed vertically, which is rather odd, but I guess they don't have support for ultra wide monitors just yet. Because it scaled it once, down, added black bars and scaled it back up, that's probably the reason for the performance drop here. Obviously, this isn't the intended use, and of course, is a negative side effect for people with ultra wide monitors, etc. etc. There we go. I'm pretty sure I've dropped FPS here, as I have, of course, been tapping out as well. Anyways, this is not the correct resolution. In the NVIDIA control panel, it's offering me 2954 by 1662, so that's what I'll be setting here in game. Because my screen is ultra wide, one of the compatible resolutions is 4K, 3840 by 2160. 77% of that is 2954 by 1662, or at least it's that on my computer. It's not exactly 77%, but anyways, that's the resolution that I have here. So I simply rinse and repeat the benchmark with a 77% and then 4K, and I'll put them side by side on the screen now. And as you can see, compared to 4K 16 by 9, the 77% of it, 16 by 9, looks plus minus the same, or at least I'd hope so, because there is some weird stretching stuff going on on my ultra wide, but the FPS should be much, much better, and it is. That means that NIS is working properly. Now, unfortunately for ultra wide users, well, I guess you'll just have to get used to it. But for everyone else that's using 16 by 9, well, hey, that's awesome news for you. You have full ability to use NIS and boost your FPS with minimal quality loss. I haven't come across an issue myself other than this ultra wide one here, nor have I heard of issues from others. So putting these two benchmarks side by side, there's obviously an improvement here. So for most users out there, you'll want to have this enabled so you can always keep it as an option while in games to get a bit more FPS if you ever need it. But for me with an ultra wide monitor, this isn't something I'm really gonna be using as if I pick one of these other resolutions, it seems to drop my refresh rate of my monitor and of course, weirdly scale it from 16 by nine to 21 by nine. But anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.